Hello, um, I'm excited to introduce Sheldon Huang. Uh, Sheldon comes uh, from UToronto, uh, but he's currently taking the year off to do internship work at the Vector AI Institute and Borealis AI. Um, he has previously done work on CFRGAN, uh, which was used to decode otherwise previously uncoded like human text, uh, which I think is really, really cool. Um, but today he'll be talking uh, with us about applying CFRGAN uh, instead of to natural language, to audio and music uh, for timber transfer. Uh, so with that, I'll give it off to Shell. Uh, thanks, Dan, for the introduction. But I actually, I, I want to first show you um, a piece of music. Um, and I want you to I want you to guess whether <laughs> yeah that's okay I just wanted to, to guess whether it's played by a neural net or machine and it's kind of spoiled at this point but <laughs> no <laughs> you're gonna get it right anyways so how many people think it's Played by uh, okay. uh, yeah. so About half of the people raised their hand, but everyone of you got it right because because it's originally played by human and then transferred by neural net, so it's kind of both. Uh, so th that that piece of music was tra uh, was tra uh, transferred from a piano piece. That's played by a uh, human from here. Can you play the audio? So it's the same music. Everything's the same. Musical content is kept the same. Only the timber is transferred. So that's the general idea of this work. So basically, the idea is that we want to, you can keep the music. It's actually a good kind of music. Um, I guess it, it doesn't work. Uh, so this work, uh, so this work is called Timbertron, a CQT Cyclegan WaveNet pipeline for musical timber transfer. I'm reading it inside out because I'm studying computer science. Uh, those are functions. So uh, the musical timber is basically what's what's characterizing a sound, and it's very hard to to model uh, timber because it's, it has a very complicated dependency on you know, um, time and like how you're playing it, even different, like slightly different instruments or like even on emotion of the player. So it's a very hard problem. And it has been referred to as the psychoacoustician's multi-dimensional waste basket category for everything that cannot be labeled pitch or loudness. And I think this is a very important problem for musicians as well as non-musicians. Because, uh, like, how many people wanted to be a musician growing up? Like, I, I did. I wanted to be a musician, but in the end, like, uh, it turns out all you can do is whistle. So, that, that's with me, but that's fine. Like, all you can do is whistle and code, and that's also enough because you can just whistle and then convert your whistle to whatever musical instrument you want to play, and that's, that's the idea. So, so the goal is to change the timbre of the music while keeping everything else the same. So this is our first attempt. Uh, we first tried to just take the waveform. So we, we like the training data will be just unrelated, unrelated bank, banks of like you know uh, piano music or harpsichord music, flute music, violin music, whatever, unsupervised learning. Um, and then we, we take the waveform, convert it to a spectrogram by short-time Fourier transform, basically just representing the uh, frequency on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. And then we take that spectrogram, which is an image, and apply cyclogan, a variant of cyclogan, really, and not the original cyclogan, and then convert it to the source, like the target, sorry, the target instrument you want to hear, here. Um, the reason why we're doing this here, because it's a lot easier to um, to do things on the image domain than the waveform domain, because the waveform, as you can imagine, one, one second will have like at least uh, 16,000 points, and it's been very hard. And if we're doing things on music domain, then all the techniques in style transfer in vision can be applied on audio as well, and that's one nice, nice thing about this work. 
But then, then the problem is how do you convert the special one back to the waveform? So because it's been very hard for people to do, do spell transfer with phase information, so we just got rid of the phase. So only the amplitude is, uh, is represented here. We used Griffin Lim to convert STFT back to waveform because it's a very traditional algorithm and it's like a very natural approach. And here are the results. Can you play the audio uh, first, this one, and then this one? So this one is the, uh, the original piano, and this one's generated. That's the original pian piano. You can also play it here, like just click it, it will. Yeah, that's the generated harpsichord. I think you can tell that the pitch is not the good at all. Everything's a mess. Like it got the right timbre, right? Because that's the power of GANs. Because you, you see, the discriminator only tells whether this is a real harpsichord or a fake harpsichord. It doesn't concern with anything like pitch, loudness, or anything. So that's the problem. So um, the first problem is that, um, so I was talking about this. Uh, in principle, any permutation of pitch or other, all kinds of stuff can change as long as the uh, generated audio sounds like a real harpsichord. And But the goal is to preserve pitch because we want to do timber transfer. So that's um, one of the biggest problem. And the other problem is, so the, um, for STFT, because the phase is discard, discarded in the beginning, it will be hard for recovery afterwards. Um, and also it, it, loses, it loses information because if you, like, there's a fundamental trade-off between the frequency resolution and the time resolution. Because if you, ha if you have a um, bigger time window, you will have better frequency resolution, but you have worse time resolution. So that's a fundamental trade-off. And then we switch to CQT because uh, what's nice about CQT is that it has different um, window for different frequency. So as you can see, the problem I was talking about just now is that let's say if, if you have a waveform that's of low frequency and the time window is this, and then you can see the difference is very small. It's very hard to tell the difference between those two waveforms. But for high frequency though, that's like for the same window size, right? Like the, it will be a, huge difference. So the idea is that the, the window size for different frequencies shouldn't be the same. And CQT is basically um, designed for that. And it's designed to work well for audio signals and music. So, so in a CQT, so this is a CQT. In a CQT, uh, low, at low frequency, the, time, the window size is big so that it has um, better frequency resolution and worse time resolution, but at the high frequency, because you don't need that big of a window size, right? So it has less window size, but um, better time frequency. But the problem is, it's even harder to reconstruct waveform from CQT, because CQT, uh, even with phase information, is very hard to reconstruct. And so that's the bottleneck of the research, converting the CQT back to the waveform. And what we did is to uh, use a variant of WaveNet, WaveNet have been proven to be a good architecture for generating a waveform on human speech. And it's autoregressive model, meaning that it will generate one data dimension at a time. So this is the architecture. I won't get into details about WaveNet, but we basically just uh, applied it here, where it takes the CQT spectrogram and reconstructs the audio waveform. So it's the final pipeline is similar to the one mentioned previously. It's but here, instead of SDFT, we use CQT, and then we generate the target audio by the cycle gain, and then reconstruct back to the waveform. Also, uh, we, to, for visualization purposes, we introduced uh, Rainbow One, because Rainbow One looks nice. It's basically, it's still CQT, but um, the color just represents the derivative of phase, so it's easier for visualization. To test our idea about um, CQT is a better representation, we did two toy experiments where we're trying to disentangle the pitch and tumble. Um, 
so if you want to make the recording fa faster or slower, the natural approach would be just have less points, right? You can you can take you can drop drop point and then make it um, you know make it uh, fast, but that will also change the pitch because the frequency will change. So it's not a trivial problem. But in timber it's, it's very easy because you can simply ask the WaveNet to generate two points, for example, and then it will it will just be slower. It will generate less points. Uh, and then also it will be easy to uh, disentangle, disentangle the pitch. Like you can, in the STFT spectrogram, everything is put on linearly. So it's um, because the, you know, the harmony, they, they, they are exponential. So it's on the y-axis, you, you cannot do simple manipulations to change the pitch. But for CQT, you can do that. And especially with WaveNet, WaveNet take the CQT as the condition and then generate the waveform. So it will be easy to manipulate pitch. And we tested that with, uh, with the, our architecture. And here are the demo video showing the results of those toys experiments. OK, you play, could you play the video, please? If you did not hear some of the bumbling in this musical sample, let's try listening to the slowed down version. So there's actually a mistake in the audio. Like if you listen really carefully. How about now? So we slowed it down. And Somebody needs to practice more. On the other hand, there's no better way to cover up mistakes than to go even faster. Let's speed this up. So another catch, if you have a mistake somewhere in your music, you just play it fast. Because of its equivariance property, the CQT representation also lets us manipulate pitch by simply shifting the spectrogram so vertically. A video. So I guess you have to imagine this. We shifted the CQT spectrogram up a Finally, we now present audio samples from our full CQT CycleGAN WaveNet pipeline. This is, the, this is the one that didn't work for SDFT. There was a clear pitch permutation. CQT fixes problem. can transfer the timber at the same time, preserve the pitch and other musical content. And those are just samples showing that it actually did that. It's the same, same one I showed in the beginning. It's translation dialing. So you can basically have one instrument and transfer to whatever instrument you want. So this one is played by one of my friends, and he really wanted to hear what's going to be like in stream. the same music that transferred to food another Right. Also, we, because um, you know, in terms of music, we don't have a really good metric to tell whether it's working 
because it's kind of subjective. So we did uh, Amazon Mechan Mechanical Turk AMT to verify that actually did what we want. So first of all, we compared our um, STFT pipeline with the CQT pipeline. And as you can see, most people here prefer CQT. Um, and also, I think it's pretty clear to you that STFT didn't really work. The pitch was permuted. We also tried to verify that um, the content is preserved. So we basically show them the original source audio and then show them the generated target audio in another, in another instrument. And our results shows that 88% 80, of the people think that uh, it's nearly identical or very similar. And only like 10% think that they are not, not very related. And also we tested that, we verified that Timber is transferred transfer, um, by asking them, give them, give them a you know, target, an audio piece from the target instrument with another music piece and then the one we generated and they cannot tell the difference between the, you know, they think they, think they are pretty similar instrument and uh, we verified through AMT, we verified that 85% of the people think the generated music is very similar to the source, oh, sorry, target musical instrument. And we also did an ablation study to verify every modification we made are necessary. Uh, we, we, I, I didn't get to mention all of them because there was a, a lot of modifications, but those are the main modifications we've made. So this is the baseline of, uh, like if we just apply the cycle again and then do it, 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 it will be completely noise, doesn't work. Um, so this is a source source waveform of the piano and the source ground truth of the harpsichord. And here we used MIDI to generate music with the same content but in different instruments for, so that it would be easy for us to compare. And this is the ribogram of the full model. As you can see, it's really close to the ground truth. Uh, and here we use the, everything's the same, but we use the original discriminator. And it, it's, like, it's, it's not working because it's far away from the ground truth. And we also tried, right, we also add gradient penalty to the cycle GAN and found that it's working really well. Also, the gradient penalty was proven to help the cipher GAN a lot. And here we verified that here without gradient penalty, it also won't work. And we also included identity loss in the cycle GAN because we want, because we want to pre pre um, prevent the pitch permutation, like in a set of all feasible solutions, we want the one that's nearest to the source audio so that, you know, it, will be, it should be the one without the pitch permutation. And as you can see here, without the identity loss, it also doesn't work because identity loss was trying to enforce, um, enforce that identity transformation. And also we tried using the original generator and it's also just giving us noise. So this is just showing that every modification is necessary to make, make Timbertron work. And that's about it. Do you have any questions? Thanks.